Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Dale. I'm back in Martindale, as you can probably guess, because it probably looks quite familiar now. I've just spotted my first herdy in quite a while, <laughs> just over there. Temperatures have plummeted significantly since last week. I was here one week ago, heading up Fusedale, and it wasn't anything like this. Minus six it was coming in this morning, so yes, very, very cold but it is looking super gorgeous already, isn't it? Look at it. It's around about half eight. Sun's just come up. There's some nice light in the sky there. I think today is gonna to be a beautiful day. Should be lots of sun. It's forecast to be sunny with a little bit of cloud and what have you. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So the route that I'm gonna to do today is actually my preferred route to hit the, the fells that I wanna to hit today. But I wasn't gonna do it this way. The original plan was to come in from Hartsop and hit the, the fells from there and split the walk up because I thought this route was too big, to be honest with you, too long and something that would be great in the summer. However, Bedderfell is the problem. It stuck out on its own and it would have meant coming from Hartsop, hitting some of the fells, going to Bedder, coming back. It worked out in the end to be even longer than this. <laughs> So I went back to this plan, and I think this route is going to be better to hit better. Let's go and have a look at the map and see which fells I'm going to be hitting today. Okay, so from the church at Martindale, I'm going to head up onto the ridge that will lead me up to Better Head, which is here. Then along a fairly long ridge, it's going to take me up to Angletown Pike's north top, and then south top, and drop down to Angletown itself, up to Brock Crags, then across Sutter Crag and up to Rest Dodd, the highest point of the day. Then I'll drop down onto the nab, and back round, very steep path, all the way back down into the valley, and then a fairly long walk back into the village and the van. So that's the route. Quite ambitious when you think about it. It's, uh, it's around about 15 kilometers, which is a long way at this time of year. But if I keep moving and don't dawdle and get distracted by incredible views, which I think there are gonna to be today, by the way, uh, I should be able to do it and hopefully get to the top of the nab before sunset. I need to stay focused and less waffleage. And if I'm waffling, I need to be talking and walking, which is difficult, but <laughs> yeah, let's go. I am so excited about this walk already. I mean, look at it, absolutely stunning. It's a winter wonderland. I was a little bit worried as I approached the road up to the church. It's a very steep, zigzaggy road up. And obviously there's a lot of frost on the ground at the moment, a lot of ice on the road. And I thought, if that hasn't been gritted, I'm gonna have to think of a plan B quickly. Probably go over to Hartsop and do a, a shorter route, but Luckily, someone had gritted it, so that was good. Right, I think... I think I head up this bit here. Yep, did a little map check there. And it is on the left-hand side of the wall that you, you head up towards the ridge, really. Once we get to the ridge of this hill, we just turn left, head south. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow, it's quite nice with the moon there as well. It's amazing how much snow can change a landscape and the scenery. I mean, it's only been a tiny dusting here, but it looks so different already. Not so much that way, but look. Look at this. Right, so it's actually a little bit later than I thought it was. It's now nine o'clock, so I must have got in there around about quarter to nine, something like that. The plan was to get to Brock Crags for about half 11, because that's around about the halfway point. Another fantastically positioned bench. This is the aptly named Winter Crag. Perfect. I didn't have much sleep at all last night, about three hours. Happens quite a lot that. On the days before these walks, the nights before, sorry, I think I get so excited, <laughs> like a kid at Christmas. I just can't sleep, it's weird. And then 
obviously on the day, I'm exhausted. So physically I'll be fine. I'll just keep on plodding on. It's the verbal stuff that's the problem. And the mind, I'll just start naming things wrong. If I do, I'll put it on the screen if I've named something incorrectly or, you know, just talking rubbish. It's such a peaceful place, this. Such a peaceful and beautiful valley. This is Bannerdale. And we're pretty much walking right round Bannerdale, up to the head and back down. And on the other side is Bordale. Straight across on the other side there is where I was last week. It's difficult to see because actually you've got two hills, one in the foreground, one behind. But you can see uh, Bonskill Pike over there in the distance. And then always up to Lord Pot Hill and Weather Hill that way. And in the foreground or closer is Steel Knots and Pikewasser. So yes, that was last week's walk. Completely different conditions. But I'm liking the look of that. It's looking lovely. And we've got Place Fell on the right hand side there. A cute little section. Just levels off for a few seconds. Now, this bit I'm on here actually featured in last week's video. So when I was on Weather Hill, up there somewhere, I showed you the nab with some nice light on it and then I panned round, I don't, I don't think I panned round, I showed you back over here and there was some little, just a little bit of sun hitting the very tip of the crag and it's beautiful. That is here, that's where we are right now. This is why this route is my preferred route really to hit these fells because you know I'm seeing these ridges and amazing little peaks on previous walks and I'm thinking oh I'm not gonna be able to go and do that because I have to go and do that you know shorter safer route for the winter uh, winter days you know but I'm glad I'm glad I just checked the distances because this actually works out significantly less than those other shorter routes it is a horseshoe I guess but more if you look at the map it looks more like a teardrop hey Hurdy yes so happy about that there's been a real noticeable lack of our little Hurdy friends on these last few walks so that was nice right that is better head I better head over there and, and get up there as I approach the initial climb up to better head. It's looking quite steep now. Um, gonna get warm. Having a few wardrobe malfunctions today. One particular one is winding me up a little bit and that's my hat. It keeps sliding off my head. Basically, I, I shaved my head too smoothly last night. <laughs> if there's any other baldies watching this, you'll know what I mean when you shave it too close and get it too smooth. Your hat tends to slide up. I end up looking like Noddy at some point today. Just looking back at Oldswater there, look at that, it's lovely, that little sliver of inversion. Absolutely stunning. Oh, sun's coming up now, you see. Everything's been lit up beautifully. It's finally leveling off. And I think I'm probably just approaching the summit. Nope, nowhere near. <laughs> Summit's up that way. Damn it. But not far. It's not far at all. Uh, I don't know why I'm pointing there, but it's not far at all to the summit. Let me just spin you around though. Look at it. Sun is just illuminating various gorgeous little features there. Lovely. Little Mel Fell and Great Mel Fell. A little bit of mist over on what is probably the A66 <coughs> running into Keswick or Threkel, <coughs> Threkel, whatever you want to, how you pronounce it. There's so many different ways of pronouncing names around here. Bedefell, 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 it could be bloody anything. I just call it better because it sounds better. <laughs> okay, still not in the flipping summit. <sighs> oh, so sure that that cane marked the true summit, but it doesn't. Isn't that just an absolutely beautiful view? Stunning looking west. Nice little shelter here as well. Let's go and have a look. Oh, this is lovely. The shelter and the walk 
I'm really enjoying this walk. And it's just started. A little bit of cloud is starting to form on top of Fairfield. That wasn't there a second ago. Oh, it's really cute. Really cute. Natural rock here. And obviously someone's built up this little bit of a shelter around it. Perfect. I mean, you know, that'll protect you from the prevailing westerly winds when it gets crazy. Right, let's get up there. This really is a... Ooh, 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 ooh. Wow. I was just going to say this really is a frozen tundra and I nearly slipped on my ass because I walked over this, look. Completely oblivious to the fact that all this is just solid ice. Whew, that could have ended quite badly. Oh, there's some nice light just lighting up Paikawasa now. Lovely. Here we go. In the sunshine. First time today. Oh, I'm in such a happy place right now. And it's all literally just transformed in the last 30 seconds as the sun has crept from behind the cloud that was there. So now we can see Hallenfell with a bit of sun on it. Gorgeous. I mean, look at that blanket of cloud and all's water as well. Okay, here we are, finally approaching the summit of Better Head. Oh, now then, look at this. It's all opening up everywhere. Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll get my camera out, a big camera, and I'll show you the, the different fells that we can see now looking out towards the west because it's all opened up. I can see a little bit of Nethermost Pike as well now. So let's have a look. So first of all, we've got the NAB front and centre there. That's the last fell of the day. That's why I'll be coming down later on. And moving across, that is Rest Dodd. That's the second to last fell of the day. You can see Red Screes there and Angletown Pikes right in the middle. Over towards, let's have a look. That will be the Priest Hall right in the middle there. So Dove Crag and then over to Hart Crag and then over to Fairfield. I mean, you can see Greenhow End right in the middle there as well. Fairfield. Oh, St. Sunday is now in the cloud. That's interesting. Dolly Wagon Pike right in the middle. And then over to Nethermost. And then obviously we've got Place Fell here. To the north, we've got Blaine Cathra, which has got a very, very thin veil of cloud on it as well. And the bit with the snow on it, that's Skidder, a bit further around to the west. We've got Gow Barrow here in the centre. Great Mail Fell, a little bit of cloud on top of it. And then Little Mail Fell. Hallin Fell. Uh, Ulls Water. Wow, look at that now. Up towards Pooley Bridge. Bonscale Pike is now in cloud. And we've got Steel Knots here in the foreground. And then the whole route I did last week up to Lord Pot Hill. And all over to Weather Hill. Yeah, and then obviously on up to High Street. And back round to the Nab. Beautiful. It is pretty cold when you stop. <laughs> Uh, you don't feel it when you're walking up because you get really hot and generate quite a lot of heat but just stopping there and looking around quite cold so what i'll do now is head along the ridge um up to bedderfell knot and then on to heckbeck head that's hard to say heckbeck head which will then lead me up to angletown pikes so yeah so far so good Yeah, that is solid. I mean, you can see that's probably about a foot deep, actually. And that is just solid. It's not creaking or anything at all. I really am glad that I've come and done the original route uh, rather than doing that revised route from Hartsop that I thought was going to be shorter because it would have been soul destroying having to come from Angletown Pikes along this ridge just to hit uh, bed ahead and then all the way back again I, I, honestly I detest those kind of walks those there and back ones Ugh. look at it look at that 
there's literally nowhere on, on earth that I'd rather be right now than here. It really is just magnificent. You know, the, the sun is just not going to get high at all today. We are, let's have a think about this one, 10 days off the shortest day of the year. The sun just does not get high at all. It'll just creep above the mountains. That's what I love about this time of year. You've kind of almost got a perpetual golden hour. It's like walking in heaven. So you can see the path there going up from Bordale up to Bordale Halls, which is where I was two weeks ago at the chapel in the halls where the place fell. It's not a breath of wind today. And when you get moving, flipping heck. Whew, I'm red hot, oh, it's really warm. But some really interesting looking light and cloud formations over on the NAB and um, Rest Dodd. Just watching it cascading off, really beautiful. I love all this grass as well. It's so nice when you see the frost form on the, the blades of grass. Very magical. Well, the clouds are definitely thickening up now out towards the east, uh, southeast a bit actually, because west is still, and north, still looking quite blue. It's all moving across now, which is quite nice because this is where you get the, like that there, for example, the little patches of light that show up. Lovely. <laughs> I'm excited. That's lovely. I love it when you get those little tendrils that come down from the clouds and kind of tickle the landscape. Beautiful. That's Rest Dodd in the cloud. Okay. First glimpse of Helvellyn, although can't actually see it. <laughs> it's sort of behind that cloud there. So you can see Burkhouse Moor front and centre there. And then over to the left, that is Casty Cam sticking up. And then this bit here leads up to High Spying How. So right in the centre is Striding Edge. You just can't see it. So I'm about a kilometre away, just slightly more than a kilometre away from Angletown Pike's north top. So I'll hit that first and then have a little uh, scamper over to south top and look down upon Angletown itself. And looking nice back along towards Ullswater. In fact, I think Gow Barrow has just been swallowed up by that, that cloud there. Right, waffleage, waffleometer, <laughs> dial it back. Let's get up and see the point when we can see north top of Angletown Pikes. All right, you can now see Angletown Pikes north top, that weird looking shape there. That's nice now looking down towards Patterdale. Beautiful, it really is. Look at that. And Sheffield Pike. These are great days, great walking days. A little bit closer, <laughs> get in there. You can see the south summit as well now, just here. Look at it, look. Unbelievable. And can you see the deer? I've got my camera today. Oh, that's beautiful. Don't think they've seen me. Oh, they've seen me. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. I'm so glad I had this camera to hand today. There you go. Just three of them. At first, I thought they were people. <laughs> Just walkers coming up from the... Uh, from Bordale Halls, which would have been the first people I've seen today, which means I still haven't seen anybody yet today. And I'm approaching Ang Angletown Pikes. Amazing, really amazing. And it, you know, it's a Sunday today. Really, I tell you what, it's a nice looking little bump, isn't it, Angletown Pikes? I really like it. It's kind of almost like a, a mini Matterhorn. I mean, when I say mini, I mean really, really mini. Squash down. 
Here are the hoof prints. Okay, in all the excitement, I dropped my hat. So I need to head back to the point where I saw the deer. Oh dear. Oh damn, it's further than I thought. Slightly worried now. Oh, heck. Aha. Five minutes walk back to the point where I saw the deer. Oh. That's why I was looking down that way. Flipping heck. Right, do it all again. There's definitely an advantage to walking around here at this time of year when the, the ground is frosty like this because it is quite boggy around here. It's a noisy bloody plane. Okay, this is it. Angletown Pike's north top. Just a big lump of rock. cloud that was moving across High Street and everything else has just dropped right down so there's a little bit of an inversion going on. Could end up above the clouds. But here we go. Oh this is lovely. Absolutely gorgeous. That is south top just there. I'm going to head straight there right now because that's when we'll get a good view of the tarn below it. First people. So you can see the path. Uh, well, either that one or this one here. And then it's just not far. It's literally three minutes. Oh, look at this. Look, look. I love stuff like this. Paths that just go round the edge of hills like this and over the brow. Wonderful. Look at that. <laughs> oh, is this heaven or what? It really is heaven. Okay, that's it. And we're on Angleton Pikes South Top. Watch this view. Watch this. Wow. That's incredible. Beautiful. I'm going to stop and have myself a marsh bar and marvel at Angle Tan down there with its various cracks and what have you. Controversial, really, isn't it? <laughs> but I'm gonna head on now to Brock Crags because I kind of feel like time is running out. So bag on, I'm gonna get over there. I'm gonna go, like I said, on the west side, thread my way up to Brock Crags. Oh man, look at that. My goodness, conditions are just changing every second. It's incredible. By the way, if you're liking this so far, please give it a thumbs up. As I said before on previous videos, likes are an essential part of this algorithmic world of hell that we live in. <laughs> it is really the only way a small channel like this can grow and spread to other people so they can find these videos. So thanks. And as I've mentioned, if you want to support the channel, if you want to put literally food on my table, please check out the links in the description. Head over to my website where you can buy photographs or merch or just buy a coffee. You know, it's up to you. All of it just goes straight back into this.
this is a bog. I'm actually walking right on top of bog. So thankfully, with it being so cold today, I can just walk straight across that. That was brilliant. Okay, here we go. This is the trot. That's gonna take me through this wall. That's nice, isn't it? The white of the, the ice on the tan, but that is definitely not thick ice. I'll tell you what, this is flipping out. That's solid. Oh, it's just a beautiful day. <laughs> Have I told you that already? Oh, that's nice, look at that tree. It is a nice tree. However, same problem I had last week. I've got the wrong lens. Look at this path, isn't it gorgeous? I look behind, so obviously that's had the sun in it all day. Everything's melted, but look forward and it's uh, still frozen. Gorgeousness. So this is Brock Crags just here. A little bit of a uphill pull now. And at that point, I'll be at the halfway point of the walk. Okay, here we are on top of rock crags. Wow. And we're now afforded that view I mentioned earlier of Brothers Water in its entirety. Oh, that's gorgeous and deep dale up towards the priest hole there. It's weird to think, you know, just, just a few months ago, zipping along all these ridges and fells in extreme heat. It's very hot. So the last time I was here, in the last video, I drop down to these rocks here. I'm not going to do it today, but it's definitely worth going over on the other side there and having that unobscured view down towards, uh, I guess, you know, Hearts Up and Pasture Bottom and a place like Pasture Bottom. I love that name. It's Pasture Bottom. <laughs> right. Hope you're enjoying it. I really do hope you're enjoying this. Look at that. Isn't that just a quintessential Lakeland scene? Right. Let's go. Let's get to the top of Rest Dodd, where I'll probably have a rest. This is actually one of my favourite places in the lakes and favourite scenes. I know I say it a lot. <laughs> Not quite a lot of you get a bit fed up with that, but this really is. This gate and the hill in the background, especially when there's a bit of snow on the ground, if you've got a bit of cloud drama, there is something about this wall and this gate that is quite special and the way it leads off down the hill. I think about this place quite a lot, actually. I do. Um, I don't know why, it just kind of pops into my head every now and then. Maybe this is where I'm going to die. Right, let's get through this gate to heaven. <sighs> Lovely. So we'll be able to see now, uh, looking back down into Bannerdale and Dale Head. You can see Dale Head there look, with the, you know, the white building. And this is the nab here. So you can see pretty much the rest of the route. So you can see the path just keeps winding around little hills here, slowly but surely heading over towards Rest Dodd. But I must admit, Rest Dodd doesn't seem to be getting any, any closer, which is a bit worrying. But here we go, so you can see the path. And then up to there, at some point, heads up onto the summit, but I can't actually see the path up to the summit from here. Oh, oh dear. Oh yes, look, there's these two here and then a whole bunch of them just went around that corner, but these two are staying. No, they're not. They're going. Okay, they've materialised once again. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five. One minute, I've lost count. Let's have a look. That's ah, so you, like you guys, line yourselves up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a shame I couldn't have got a shot then. It's a shame I was bloody yip yapping as I came around that corner. Ah, but they're going up. They're going up towards where I'm going. So 
I might see them again yet. Well, that was a lovely little treat, wasn't it? Seeing the deer there, lovely. But here's water. Yes, very nice. I don't know how visible that is with this very, very low sun. But yeah, still not getting any closer. I don't know what's going on. Some really nice light out towards the northwest now. I'll tell you what, what's actually happening is a huge blanket of cloud being pulled across from the north of the park, going right across uh, Ray's there and everything else. Flipping heck. So it might actually get a bit gloomy soon. Two more summits to go. Let's go up to Rest Dodd. And back up into the snowy, frosty tundra again. Look at it out south. Look at those curves. Wow. It's like I'm walking to heaven. <laughs> I'm just approaching the summit of Rest Dodd. And I was kind of hoping that I'd get here and it would be clear because it's all looking really nice everywhere. But it, it's, yeah, it's, the clouds are building now. I don't know if I'll have a clear view, which is a shame, but <laughs> look at it. Wow. Isn't it? This is my favourite place. <laughs> I'm joking. I do feel a bit euphoric though, and that's how I kind of, you know, start to feel that way and start to fall in love with stuff and people and everything. It just has that effect, doesn't it? You see a little bit of angle tan down there. Right, let's get on. It's only here, look. A few more feet. We're gonna get a full white out. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> it's not quite white out conditions, really. Here we go. Summit of Rest Dodd. Okay, I'm gonna assume that it's the larger pile of stones over there that I need to go to. I just love that kind of scene. Oh yeah, it's definitely higher. Uh, I'm just gonna touch it. Right, I don't know how long this cloud is gonna hang around for. It might just sit here for a while. It's not thick, obviously, the sun is right there. Yeah, I don't know. So I think what I'm gonna do is just drop down to the nab where it was definitely clear, and then uh, just assess the situation. Cause it's around about quarter past one now. You wouldn't think it, would you? Looking at how low the sun is, you'd think that was six o'clock, seven o'clock at night, but it's, it's not a quarter past one. But look at this, look at it. I knew it was going to be steep, but how steep is this going to be? And do I need to get my spikes out? I'd be ashamed I have to get my spikes out just for this little bit. Nah, it's not too bad actually, because it's quite grassy. I can just dig in. Yeah, this is all right. Wow, what a difference 15 to 20 minutes make. Look how gloomy it is now. That is the single last bit of sunlight left. <laughs> I really hope that's not it for the day. It kind of looks like it is. It looks really thick. So onwards to the nab. I mean, look at this terrain here. You can see that that is proper Bogsville. All that soil erosion. I'm really hoping it's quite crispy. I can see the path threading through it, so it might be all right. Let's go. Okie dokie, down to the wall, and then down to the right. And through the gap. Easy path ahead now, up to the summit of the nab. Let's do this. But before I do, look how gloomy it is. Look at the cloud base, it's literally cut off all the hills. Bleak. <laughs> but beautiful. Wow, it's really interesting when you get down close 
to this section. It's really vast, actually, all this um, soil erosion. Quite a big area. It didn't look like, like this from up there. I mean, look how deep this is. And ordinarily, this would be um, very, very soft underfoot. I mean, it just, it would be a bog. And you can see here, look, this is, ooh, solid ice. <laughs> Maybe not that solid. But yes, this is ice here, look. Here we go, look. Summit of the nab is starting to lag in. Look at that behind, though. Isn't that beautiful? Rest Dodd looks amazing. As I keep looking behind, it's just changing all the time. So this cloud is, is starting to creep down the valley now. I wonder if it's going to catch me up, you know, spill all the way down and just envelop me. Although I'm going to get enveloped anyway now, look. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love clag. <laughs> Just love walking around in the mist like this. But if you cast your mind back one week, which isn't too difficult, it was the nab that I could see when I was over on Weather Hill, which is probably kind of over in that direction. And it had this beautiful light on it. It was really lit up in a gorgeous way. Shame it's not like that tonight. It was promising to be. I mean, you wouldn't even think it was the same day, would you? <laughs> Just watching the cloud drop down on the ridge that was on before, you know, bed ahead and everything else. It's all gone. It's all clagged in, everything else. All right. Here we go. The summit of the nab. Look at that view. <laughs> right, so this is the last fell of the day. And it's also the last fell of this northern section of uh, the Far Eastern Fells. I won't be coming back to Howtown in the rest of this series, uh, which is a bit of a shame. I will definitely be coming back and doing walks here. But now I've done this northern section, all the rest of the walks will be started from various places further south. But it does feel nice doing this route today because I've, I've sort of connected everything up. I've done all the different ridges and what have you. It feels really good. Such a fantastic route, it really is. But it's not over yet. I've got about four kilometres to go yet. <laughs> um, and some of it is down potentially quite a steep bit of a hill. Let's head down to the valley, back down to Bannerdale, and then um, to Dale Head, and we'll walk along the road there. It's about time for a bounty. It's funny because someone mentioned in the last video in the comments that, uh, that their favourite's a topic. And I thought, oh yeah, I do like topics. I really like topics. I don't, I'm not a big fan of Mars bars. I don't know why I got into them just before I started this series, but it, it just seemed to hit the spot. I've always considered uh, Mars bars, Morris bars, as a bit plain, a bit boring. It's got nothing, it's just a bit, yeah, there's nothing to them really, is there? So historically, I've never really liked them, but for some reason I just got into them. My favourite, I just love nutty things. I love um, Snickers <laughs> and, and Topics, because they've got nuts in them as well. Uh, Lion Bar, Picnics, they're all good. Bounties, I love the dark chocolate bounties. And I'll tell you something else I love as well, which is a little bit controversial. Let's see how many of you go, Boop. Turkish Delight. Fries, Turkish Delight. Gorgeous, I used to eat them like literally by the kilo. But at the moment, Bounty, yeah, I was gonna get a topic. That, that's where I was going with that, sorry. I just kinda got slightly distracted. I was going to get a topic from the garage this morning. I was looking and looking at everything. I mean, literally everything. But topics, no topics. I asked the guys, have you got any topics? But no, I don't think we have. <laughs> Do they still make them? I don't know. They better add. I need to start switching on because look how steep this is. <laughs> this isn't the camera making it look really steep, by the way. It really does look like this. It's a sort of a path, like a ledge, really. Um, but... I just don't want to be slipping down into that because I just don't think I'll stop. So I need to be really careful here and to stop eating the bounty. Okay, it's better now. I mean, it's still steep. You can see it's still steep, but uh, yeah, it's slightly wider, a little bit of a ledge here. Okay, I'm actually only halfway along this path. <laughs> it's longer than I thought. Ho -ho. Now then. This would ordinarily be really, really boggy. <sighs> right. Plain sailing now. Literally one second after I said plain sailing, <sighs> I fall over. 
I slipped there and landed right on my finger, but my finger got stuck behind a flipping rock. I thought, like, ah, I've just snapped my finger off, but I haven't. So I'm just being a drama queen. <laughs> that hurt, that really hurt. But also a real reminder to stay switched on. It's that old thing, isn't it? The most dangerous part of any journey is the last five minutes because you just switch off and it's so true. That's looking back up towards the nab. That is a brutal looking hill, actually. I would not like to go straight up that. Gate or style, gate or style. Gate would be my preference. Let's see if we can open it. It's all tied off with this really expensive bit of string. So let's go the style that looks a little bit sketchy, if I'm absolutely honest with you. Oh God, it's creaking like mad. Short stroll now to the track. Right, I am finally back down in the valley and uh, on this track. What a view. And heading back towards the road um, that runs right along the valley. Yeah, beautiful. So that's what it was this morning up there. Wandering along, so that'll be um, better head up there or something. Bed head, was bed, it was better head, wasn't it? So it's about a two kilometre walk along this valley now. It's a little bit, a bit of a pain, but you know, what else, do you, what else can you do? I mean, I could have gone up there, I suppose, and back up onto steel knots. If you really were feeling super fit and healthy, you could, you could go back up and go that way, but I'm an old knacker now. I can't do things like that. I've done eight. I did it last week. This road just doesn't seem to flip an end. It's just going on and on and on. But I think it's safe to say, without a shadow of doubt, that this is the quietest and least frequented valley in the Lake District. Easily. Must be. I've not seen, seen a single flip in person yet. Nobody. No cars. No one milling around these houses. Nothing. And it's just dawned on me that I've only seen, wait for it, and this entire route, 15 kilometres more, two people. Two people. And they're the two guys I saw on top of Angletown Pikes. I didn't see anybody before that leading up to Angletown Pikes. And I've not seen anybody since. Not even from a distance. It's just, it, well, it's weird, isn't it? I mean, it's a Lake District. It should be rammed, but I guess most people are, are up the usual spots, you know, Hellevel and Scarfell Pike and what have you. So if you want to go somewhere that's quiet and no one goes to and have the Lake District, or certainly a little piece of it, completely to yourself, it's come here. It kind of feels a little bit like 28 days later. Like, like, like the whole world's just gone. Oh no, that's a horrible thought. Can you imagine that? If actually they have, they're all zombies. Like a whole lot of them just can't run down the road here towards me. Not so far now to uh, the village of Martindale and obviously the van. So let's get to the van and assess that road situation because I don't want to be sleeping here tonight with the zombies. Hey, Herdy. Oh, it's a welcome sight. 